Hi everyone, this is Trevor Jones from astrobackyard.com and in this video I'm going to walk you through a beginner level DSLR camera and telescope setup for deep space astrophotography. My wife Ashley is a complete beginner to deep space astrophotography and it's something she said she wants to do this year so I've built a setup for her. She's going to actually put it all together and get it working tonight and we're going to walk you through the process. Just be yourself. It's, people on the internet are always very nice. So have you thought about where you're going to shoot tonight? Well, we talked about this and you said a big, bright, bright? We nebula? decided. That it's going to be the North American Nebula. Yes. So I've given Ashley a bunch of my existing astrophotography equipment, dedicated rig for her to use all summer long. Now it's important that she uses the same rig night after night so she becomes more comfortable with it and learns how to use it, actually spends time with it. This really is an entry level DSLR camera and telescope setup. I say entry level, but very capable of taking incredible deep space photos. So no excuses, Ash. Okay, let's see how well Ashley knows her own gear. Uh, what are we working with in terms of telescopes, Ash? We have a William Optics Zenith Star 73 APO doublet and a 50 millimeter guide scope riding on top. So that's a refractor telescope we're working with there, right? Yes, glass. What, and what's the focal length? Oh, um... And what's the camera we're working with here? We have a Canon EOS 60DA which is a mod essentially modified DSLR camera, full frame, not full frame, <laughs> <laughs> APS-C. Yes. And the telescope mount is the trusty old EQ-5 Skywatcher. Don't forget the H. H? Oh, what'd I say, EQ-5? And this little red guy here is the ZWO ASI 120mm Mini guide scope camera <laughs> <laughs> this is a great wide field deep sky astrophotography setup with that dslr having a modified dslr camera for astrophotography that allows that hydrogen alpha those important wavelengths of light to pass through to the sensor uh, is a nice thing to have but it's not totally necessary to enjoy deep space astrophotography so this telescope is going to capture objects at a focal length of 430 millimeters at f 5.9 i believe and then there is a dedicated field flattener for this double it sitting between the adapter on the camera the t-ring and the focuser draw tube of this telescope so that just flattens the field and that provides a better image overall the telescope mount is a computerized go-to mount ashley's holding up the hand controller there so we'll use this for the star alignment routine uh, as well as slewing over to our deep space objects when we're ready got everything plugged in No, you don't need them on yet. Tonight is a really great night weather-wise for Ashley to take her first deep space photo. It's around new moon, so we won't have that bright moonlight to deal with, uh, just the city light pollution. So she's actually not using a filter tonight. She's going to collect a broad spectrum, true color image of the North American Nebula. That's one of the reasons I wanted her to choose that target is because it is very bright and even from the city, a target like that without a filter can turn out pretty decent with a DSLR camera and telescope like this. So why are you raising the legs of the tripod there? We want it to be as stable as possible. Why wouldn't you just keep it right there on the bottom? Uh, for the polar alignment process, to get down nice and low, if the legs are too close to the ground, it's really hard to get underneath there and polar align. Smart. So Ashley will be using a laptop computer to connect the DSLR camera and run a sequence of long exposure images uh, through a software called Astrophotography Tool. Now this is a very easy to use software, especially if you're using it with a DSLR like the Canon 60DA that she's using. But the laptop also runs other software like PHD2 Guiding, which is an auto guiding software. So that software will look at the guide camera in the guide scope writing on top, focus on a star and improve the tracking accuracy of the telescope mount. Speaking of auto guiding, Ash, what does everyone say to me 
when they check up on things at a star party and they, they see me imaging. How's that guide graph looking? So we're just waiting for it to get a little bit darker out so we can polar align the telescope mount and then do things like star alignment and focus the guide camera and the telescope. Uh, but the reason we're set up where we are in the yard is because the object actually shooting the North American Nebula is going to be where? That direction. That's right. In the east, rising over the uh, telephone wires by about 10.30 p.m. So that's why we kind of got away from the house a little bit so we can sh start shooting that target a little bit earlier. As you can see here, we are plugged into household power with an extension cord. And the things that we're running there are, uh, we've got a little power bar that has USB ports to power the dew heater bands on the telescope. And then of course the telescope mount itself requires power and the laptop. It's important that Ashley balances the load on her imaging rig so the mount doesn't have to work any harder than it needs to. So you can slide that counterweight down just a touch there, it looks like, Ash, because it's falling scope side just slightly. So the RA is really important, the declination is as well. So she's gonna loosen that declination clutch and uh, see how we're doing in declination as well. I think we're pretty good in RA. See how the scope's not moving when she lets it go there? She's gonna lock it in on the clutch and then in declination. This one? Yep. That one as well. And knowing this rig, I think it's a little bit back heavy with that heavy DSLR on there. It's really not that bad though. It's gonna fall a little bit. Mm -hmm. Nothing the mount can't handle though, it's very slight. So on this telescope mount, for whatever reason, uh, the polar scope is blocked when the declination axis is in the home position. You actually need to tilt it uh, 45 degrees and then you can actually see through the polar axis to see the uh, North Star. So <laughs> kind of important to know that one. What are you doing over there? Updating my Instagram profile. So legit. My new one. No followers. So Ashley's going to polar align the mount now and good news she can already see Polaris the North Star. Uh, it's not where it needs to be but it needs some subtle adjustments to get it there. So a lot of people like to skip over this process and use a tool something like the QHY Pole Master to do this electronically uh, but you know what if you're not afraid to get down in the grass uh, you can do it manually. So what Ashley's doing right now is adjusting the alt as bolts which is the side to side and i'm not going to lie on this old heq5 mount the, the bolts aren't you know the funnest to use but she's basically getting the the altitude in the sky that she needs to reach for polaris and uh, as for where she's putting it we're using that app as i said polar finder that tells us from our gps coordinates where it needs to be so we found the correct position for Polaris in the Polar Finder reticle. So now we just have to make sure we don't kick the tripod legs or move the mount. On this axis, anyway, the, the telescope mount will not move. But you can go ahead and put the declination and RA back into the home positions, Ash. Now that we've polar aligned, Ashley can go ahead and turn the telescope mount on. And the hand controller is going to boot up. And she's going to enter in some information the telescope mount needs to know before it can start tracking properly like the time and date and daylight savings time. So Ashley is going to do a two star alignment on this mount and the first star she's going to pick is the very bright star Vega which you can maybe see in the background there. So once she finds it from a selection of stars which she has thumbs up you can go ahead and press enter and the telescope's going to slew towards the general direction of Vega and we'll have to fine tune it from there. Looks like it's going in the right direction. And a DSLR makes this process really easy, uh, especially one with a, a large sensor like this, an APS-C sensor, as opposed to some of the smaller ones you find in a dedicated astronomy camera. We'll have a large field to find that bright star and to center it. Okay, at this stage, Ashley's got the camera turned on but is not connected to the computer. She's turned live view on and the camera setting she's using is ISO 6400 to kind of maximize that light transmission so we can actually find that bright star in live view on the camera. Now one thing we don't have yet is the focus position and that's kind of a guessing game. We're probably roughly where we need to be but uh, she's going to have to make an adjustment there. So the first thing we need to do is move towards the bright star Vega because we do not see it in the live view screen yet. 
So the first thing you want to do on this mount is change the slew rate because it starts, it's going to default to something like two and we need it to go a little faster than that. We're searching for this star. So just press the rate button mash and change that to seven. Rate, seven, and then enter. Okay, now it'll move a lot faster. When she presses these arrow keys, the telescope mount is going to move around. So she's gonna look for that star Vega. We know it's close and it should come into view if she moves around a little bit. Oh, I see it right there. Okay, so we're gonna center that star in the box. We're almost centered there. Looks like it needs to go right a bit, Ash. There we go. Looks perfect to me, what do you guys think? Now you can go ahead and press enter and we're gonna tell the telescope mount that that's exactly where Vega should be to be centered. Now we need to choose our second star and I think we should choose Arcturus because it's nice and bright. There it is there, so let's choose Arcturus. So the great thing about your second alignment star is that the telescope mount already has a reference point to go from, so chances are it's gonna show up right in the field of view right off the bat. So go ahead and slew to Arcturus, Ash. So we should see it there on the screen already. And we do, look at that, it's almost centered already. So Ash is just gonna do some fine tuning and then she's gonna hit OK. And then before we move anywhere else, we're just going to focus the telescope. It's in a rough focus right now, but there's a tool we're gonna to use to make sure it's critically focused. So this telescope includes a Batonoff mask inside of the lens cap that you can use for focusing. It's a great little tool to really nail your focus. So put that on there, Ash. There we go. And it's going to create a star diffraction pattern that we can use to really lock in the focus of this telescope. With Vega being a super bright star, she should see a really noticeable star diffraction pattern that she can use to focus the telescope. Ashley has the Batonoff mask on the scope now and you're looking at the star Vega. You can't see it, but we'll zoom in to five times and then 10 times view to see how that star diffraction pattern looks. It's pretty close to being in focus already. So very minor adjustment on the uh, focuser on the telescope. So just adjust that fine focus knob. There you go. See that center spike aligned in the middle? That means you've absolutely nailed in your focus. She can go ahead and lock the focuser in position. Uh, this telescope has a little locking screw underneath the focuser. And then we can take the Batonoff mask off. Now that Ashley has focused the camera in the telescope and star aligned and polar aligned the scope, she can actually connect all the cables we need to run this system for astrophotography. So for this camera, it's a mini USB cable that will connect to our laptop, as well as the auto guiding cable. It looks like a phone jack uh, plugged into the back of the guide camera and the mount itself and then a USB type C cable into the back of the guide camera and also into the laptop computer. That way we'll be connected to both cameras and we can dive into the software. Now we're under the software side of things. So Ash, you can go ahead and open up Astro Photography Tool. This will control the camera. And then the other software we wanna open up is PHD2 Guiding. And there's a little green circle pin there. Yep, go ahead and click that and we're going to connect the guide camera. So there's a little connect button, looks like a little USB. There you go, hit that. And now we're gonna select our ASI camera via ASCOM and then on camera, that's the auto guiding method we're using, which is connected to the mount, you can hit connect and then you can close that and now hit the loop button, which looks like the green recycling logo. And there you, I see a very out of focus star there. So um, if you just monitor the screen there, Ash, I'll slide the camera and you tell me when we've got some focus stars. That's better. Better? So all I'm doing right now is moving the camera's position in the inch and a quarter opening on the back of the guide scope to find focus. And I believe these are two second loops, Ash, or 1.5 seconds. 1.5 so those stars are looking nice and tight and that's what you want to see through your guide camera I'm going to go ahead and lock it in for you Ash now that the guide camera is in focus we can go ahead and go back to APT and uh, start to frame up our deep sky object okay now there's a few things we can do we could do a live view and see what the camera sees right now through the telescope which is still on Vega or we can take some test exposures uh, but this is where we want to frame up our target. So first we're going to slew to the North American Nebula, which is the NGC catalog number of 7,000. 
So there's a few catalogs built into this SinScan hand controller from Skywatcher. We can cycle through, we've got double stars, variable stars, user objects, name stars, and what we want is the NGC catalog. There we go, NGC catalog, go ahead and press enter, and then type in NGC 7000. And then press enter, and the scope's going to enter again, confirm, yep. <laughs> so as far as framing objects manually go, it's a lot easier with something like astrophotography tool than just on the back of the camera because you've got this big screen to work with. So we've taken a 12 second test exposure of NGC 7000 where, it, where it, the telescope thinks it is. Uh, and it's right there. We can see the, the Cygnus wall, it's very faint, but we do wanna fine tune that alignment and framing. So what we're gonna do now is go to the live view, Ash. And because we've got this really bright reference star in there, we can actually use that to line things up. So we wanna move it to the left and down a bit using the hand controller. So we can actually look at it in real time to do our framing up and move that star to the left. There we go, left. It looks like you're already going down a bit and left, which is great. We're just bringing that, that Cygnus wall portion of the nebula we saw in the test exposure closer to the middle. That looks good. And we'll take another test exposure, this time going 30 seconds so we can see more details in the nebulosity of this photo. So that little adjustment we made to the framing of our target was all that we needed to get it aligned just the way we like it. It doesn't always happen that easy. Uh, that's one of the reasons why I suggested that Ashley choose the North American Nebula because it does have that bright Cygnus wall portion that really jumps out in a test exposure of even 12 seconds. So now that we've got it framed up, there's only a few more things to do uh, in terms of auto guiding before we can actually set our sequence of exposures and actually start taking long exposure pictures of our nebula in the night sky. So we can go ahead and hop into PhD2 guiding now, Ash, and start the calibration process. And the reason we can do that now is because we're framed up on our target and this is where we want to be in the sky. So this is where we want to calibrate that guide camera. There's a button there with a star on it that's going to choose an appropriate star to use as a guide star, Ash. Go ahead and click that. And then go ahead and hit that green guide button. And by default, it's going to start the calibration process before doing anything else. Once this calibration process has finished, the telescope mount will be tracking and guiding for the ultimate accuracy. While that calibration process is taking place, Ashley can set up her imaging sequence. And then this is where we're gonna set the camera settings for our long exposure images. So go ahead and choose an exposure of, let's say 180 seconds, three minutes. And the reason for that value is that this is a broadband, broad spectrum target without a filter. So it's gonna be bright images here in the city if we try to shoot too long. So we don't wanna oversaturate anything or blow anything out. So I think three minutes is a good spot. ISO, why don't we choose 800? Just kind of a nice middle ground uh, for a night like tonight. It is rather warm, uh, but I think three minutes at ISO 800 is a good place to start. And then why don't we set it to take, let's say 70 exposures. I don't know if we'll get that many, but uh, wishful thinking. Go ahead and choose the quality of raw. Now add as new, and it's gonna add it to the sequence list. Perfect, and just say okay. Now let's go check on our guiding calibration. I can hear the mount making little noises, so it's nudge south four. Guiding, perfect, that's what you wanna see. Now you can minimize this. It's gonna be doing its thing in the background, and we can go ahead and hit start for our imaging sequence, finally. Are you excited, Ash? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, go ahead and press start. What do you think of the first exposure, Ash? You can see it? You can see it. You can see the Cygnus wall and kind of the overall shape of the North American Nebula. So we're gonna go inside and have a beer now, I think, because <laughs> we've done our work and we're gonna let this thing fire away for 70 images of three minutes each on the North American Nebula. And then Ashley's gonna process the photo herself using my processing guide to see if uh, she enjoys using it and if she can figure it out. So we're getting there, buddy. <laughs> 